Okay, hello everybody. We are back for another episode of Legally Couture. We have a guest with us this week. This is Taylor. Do you want to say hi to everyone, hello. Taylor? <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Taylor, also known as the Legal Confidential on socials. Yes. Um, I'm a third year law student living in DC and I'm super excited to be joining you. Yes, and we're super excited to have Taylor. We've had a couple other law students on before. Um, I don't know if you know or follow Morty Weiss and then um, Avery Bishop we had on too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've heard from a couple different perspectives of law students and then myself also being a law mm -hmm. student. My roommate, she's come on a couple times. But we're excited to have another perspective. We haven't had somebody from the D.C. area yet. So that'll be fun to kind of hear what life is like in D.C., uh it's something, it's something. <laughs> i so i was a transfer student so i started off okay. in denver okay um, at university of denver and then after my first year i transferred to george washington mm. um mid like pandemic in 2020 which was a little weird oh um yes <laughs> but I, so i feel like i have to just claim that because sometimes i feel like i'm not i haven't gotten the exact traditional law school experience yeah so did you do your entire first year i assume then in denver Yes, yes. Okay. So I went to Denver. I just wanted to try something new. Ended up not being really the best fit for me. I kind of mm -hmm. wanted to come back to DC. I want to work in public interest law and yeah. nonprofit law, probably. Um, so mm -hmm. it just seemed like DC would be a better fit. So after oh, yeah. my first semester grades, that's when you can apply mm -hmm. um, to transfer. And so I transferred, found out I got it in the spring, like in March, once COVID lockdown started, yeah. and then moved to DC in May, which was just like, a weird whirlwind of timing. Yeah. No, that's crazy. Were you on Zoom then for that year, your first year at GW? The second semester we were. Um, oh, okay. And but, so I had one semester in person and then my whole 2L year was on Zoom. Okay. And then this fall semester was in person. So as a 3L, I was like on campus at GW for the first yeah. time. Didn't know where the library was until finals week. That's um, crazy. So Being it's a 3L like crazy. and you're like, it's my first time on campus. Right. I'm like, I'm literally like 1L again. Yeah. No, that's crazy. Yeah. But the transfer process, I find so interesting for law school because like in undergrad, you can really transfer at any point in time, any year that you want. But with law mm -hmm. school, you transfer after that first year right or you don't transfer <laughs> yeah and it definitely like puts a lot of pressure on your first semester grades because yeah. those are the only grades you have and yeah. also as a transfer like none of your grades transfer so then as a 2l like you feel that pressure all over again like trying get to get good grades, grades your first mm -hmm. semester and like i don't know i could go on a whole like tangent about how i don't think grades matter as much as law students make them out to matter yeah um, but it definitely is like a lot of pressure if you want to transfer yeah, definitely. And then um, with transferring then that summer between your first and second year, did you do OCS um, or not no. OCI at Denver or GW or neither one? So neither. So okay. because of COVID, it was moved to January of my 2L year. Oh, um, okay. But because I don't want to work at a law firm and I was like pretty sure of that, um, I started applying for summer like public interest internships. Mm -hmm in DC when I was still in Denver because I was like pretty certain I wanted to move to okay. DC mm -hmm. um and even though I like hadn't gotten into school yet I was like I'm manifesting this I'm applying yes. there we love ended manifesting luckily, we love that yes. on this podcast <laughs> speaking it into existence yeah um ended up getting a job that ended up being virtual because of COVID um yes. but it ended up working out and then by the time OCI rolled around at GW um transfer I know other transfers like went through OCI I just personally like didn't want to work at a law firm over the summer yeah. so I didn't go through the OCI process so I can't really mm -hmm. speak to that but I know yeah. other transfers have found that stressful like a non-COVID years because mm -hmm. then you kind of have to jump in in August like right when you yeah, get there like right after you find out you're transferring right basically. right you don't get to apply until like June or May it's whenever so, you get your grades right yes I applied mm -hmm. early admission I believe um okay so I applied like January, right after I got my first semester grades, I got oh. in in March and it's okay. like technically contingent on your spring grades, but my spring grades ended up being pass fail. So oh, luckily so I it, knew, yeah, right. That's nice. Because I was definitely scared because I knew like I had come to DC in February to tour some schools and mm -hmm. some schools were like, 
yeah, like you might not find out until August if you get in. And I was like, what do I do yeah. about like an apartment? Yeah. But because of the pass fail, that actually worked out in your favor. Yes, definitely. That's amazing. I love that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so stressful. Oh my goodness. I transferred in undergrad and like, oh, gotcha. That was stressful enough. So I, I can't imagine like doing it with law school and like waiting until August to find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I was yes. so happy I found out early because I'm like very much a type A planner. I was like, all right, my yeah. lease ends in like June. Like I need yeah. to know before then, yeah. but it ended up working out for the best. That's good. I love that. And how are you liking DC now? I love DC. So I had lived in DC before um, okay. in college for internships, like over the summer and okay. stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd kind of like gotten a sense that I liked it, which is why I was kind of confident in my decision to come back. Um, but I love DC. It's obviously been different during the pandemic, but mm. so far so good. Yes, that's good. Yeah, definitely all the cities are different during the pandemic. So I'm going to school in New York mm -hmm. and I've like been to New York many times, but I've never lived there. So the only mm -hmm. New York living I know is pandemic living. Oh, that's crazy. Which is so interesting because I can't even imagine what it was like before. Yeah, so. no, I haven't been to New York during COVID, but I've only been before and I've like yeah. kind of not wanted to go during COVID just because I'm like, oh, that's it's tough because it's not yeah. all open. But I do feel like like this year before like the winter spike and everything, I feel like it was more open than other cities because of like the vaccine yeah. passports and everything. Yes, and I was definitely. like kind of jealous of like how open it looked during the summer because like yeah. compared to DC, I was like, oh, I feel like they're like living their best lives right now. But yes, it, no, I moved in August and everything was basically open that mandate um, with the vaccine passports one in two weeks after mm -hmm. I moved. Gotcha. So two weeks after I moved, like everything was able to like continue staying open. You just had to show vax cards when you went to um, bars and restaurants, um, entertainments like Broadway as they started started opening back up you had show cards for that you went to a concert um and then what was the other thing I think that was it workout classes bars restaurants and then entertainment um but yeah so then everything was able to stay open which was really nice um and you know now everybody's getting COVID but yeah <laughs> it was nice during the summer <laughs> yeah I know I feel like it, I was getting hopeful because our mayor just announced she's going to kind of like take the New York approach and like yeah. do the requirements. And I was like, yay, we're now like bars yeah. and restaurants open again. And then yes. like this winter spike of everything hit. And I'm like, yeah. so are we going to have a whole semester of Zoom law or? <laughs> yeah, we're doing, so we're doing our first two weeks on Zoom. We're um, doing one week, allegedly. I'm like, let's see what happens. Yeah, well, that's what we are too, because we don't start until the 18th. So they're like, we're going to oh, go nice. on Zoom. Um, for those last two weeks of January and then we'll reassess but we plan mm -hmm. to be back open yeah so, I know I'm a little skeptical but yeah we'll see I'm a little skeptical the, our only hope um, as my roommate pointed out is that they're keeping the building open though we're just oh, doing good. classes on zoom gotcha. so that gives us a little hope that they actually will bring us back yeah I know I feel like they're trying to get us back yeah we have to get boosters to go back to I'm not Same. sure okay yeah so I think that'll help too maybe they're giving like the couple weeks to like allow more people to get like boosted and get tested right. and back to campus so we'll see how that pans out yes <laughs> but yes okay so let's get into like the major content of the episode now okay so now you all know where Taylor's from where she goes to school where she went to school her first year her whole backstory so um, Taylor is a, you're in your third year, right? Yes. Third year of law school. So you've been doing this a while. Um, so just like basic tips I want to get into first. Any mm -hmm. tips you have for somebody that's considering going to law school in the near future? Yeah, I think my biggest thing is just don't go unless you really want to be a lawyer. Um, I I kind of started blogging. I know that's like a different topic, but I started during nope, the pandemic okay. Mix because it all in. <laughs> I feel like some people just give a really like false narrative about law school and mm -hmm. they get this like romanticized version of what it's like. And the truth <laughs> is law school is hard. It's stressful. Mm -hmm. It's mentally draining. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. It consumes your life for three years. And so like, if you want to do something else, like then you can be happy without a law degree, then yeah. I would definitely recommend doing that. 
But at the same time, if you want to be a lawyer, like I know that can look like a lot of different things. I don't mm -hmm. want to work in corporate law. I don't even want to work at a law firm. And for me, like I took a constitutional law class in undergrad and like fell in love with it. And mm -hmm. um, I just think that you kind of need a strong why, not to tell other people, but like to get you through the hard times. Mm -hmm. So if you're considering law school, like there's no harm in taking time off before going. Um, just like make sure you're really sure before making that commitment. Yeah, definitely. I will second that. I took a year off. I knew I wanted to go, but I still like took that year off to work in a law firm in between to kind of get a mm. feel for the environment. And I was like, yeah, I definitely want to do this. But um, that's definitely good advice because it is a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of stress. So yes, if it's not what you want to do, it's kind of a waste of putting yourself through all of that. Definitely. And I felt like kind of during my first year, it turns out I was just like in the wrong location for me. But at the time I was like questioning, like, cause I didn't take time off before coming to law school. And so I was like, was this the right decision? Mm -hmm. Like, did I jump into this too fast? And then like, you know, once you're already at, in your first year, you're like, I've already spent X amount of money. I've already, yeah. you know, spent all this time studying. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to give up now. And I think a lot of people feel that way. And mm -hmm. I think that's, kind of like one of the reasons there's a lot of burnout in the legal profession generally. Mm -hmm. um, but I think like law school is kind of, a lot of people are not really honest about how brutal it can be sometimes yeah. or like, you know, just a lot of aspects of it. So I would just say like, make sure you're sure. Yeah, I agree with that too. That point about there being a lot of burnout because once people have started, they're like, well, I don't want to like give up on it because I put in the time right. and effort. And I, I wonder if that has to do with like the type of people that usually go to law school and how we are like lots of type a people right where we once we commit to it we're like well we have to do it now otherwise we wasted all of that time yeah and then it does like catch up with you later if it's not what you want definitely to be doing. definitely and I feel like that was like where I was at before I transferred I was like I mean I basically told my parents I was like I'm either transferring or dropping out because I'm really yeah. like just not happy in Denver I'm not happy mm -hmm. where I'm at and it wasn't even the school. It was honestly just like, I, it wasn't right for like my career path. And mm -hmm. it kind of took like a, a shift in focus and everything. And like, um, because I was able to transfer, it worked out. But if I was not going to be able to, I probably mm -hmm. would have either dropped out or like forced myself to do it just to prove to myself I could. Yeah. Um, and I think you're right about like the type A people and there's a lot of perfectionist um, and mm -hmm. it's just not worth it if it's not what you want to do. Yeah, I didn't realize that everybody in law school well, not everybody most people in law school have that like type a personality until I've been like making friends in law school and mm -hmm. I'm like we all have the same like perfectionist mindset yeah like my roommate and I will just be talking about normal things and we're like wow we like agree on everything like in that type yeah. of way and then we'll be like do you think this is why we're both in law school <laughs> because our brains work the same way definitely definitely it agree is. yeah it is super interesting <laughs> But yeah. And then along those lines of like tips for people going to law school, what is one thing you wish you knew about law school? Like actually something about being in it that you wish you knew before starting, like maybe a myth I, that you had heard yeah. that you wish was busted. Okay. I would think that, I think like one thing I just thought like people had it more together in law school. And I think that's why imposter syndrome is also so real and it like it just never really goes away you just get better at dealing with it and like when I came into law school it's really easy to be insecure it's like oh like I didn't take a year off I'm younger than mm -hmm. people or oh I didn't go to as good of an undergrad school or mm -hmm. x y and z when in reality at your law school in your 1L section you're looking at a big group of people that had you know a group of GPAs and LSATs that are so similar mm -hmm. and you are on paper literally just as good as them but it never mm -hmm. really stops feeling like that, especially with other things, when, whether it comes to OCI or jobs mm -hmm. and people like to seem like they have it together more than they do. But I think I wish I just knew that like no one really has like their shit together all the time. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. We talked about imposter syndrome a lot um, when Avery was on. That was the one big thing that she wanted to talk about a lot. And um, we discussed how like it does never go away. Mm -hmm. And it is just something that you kind of learn to deal with and be like, okay, like I'm going to feel like this, but I know it's not true. And right. you just have to kind of accept like, yes, we're all in the same boat. And like you said, we all have very similar grades and right. LSAT scores. So we're all in the same general range. Nobody's coming in like 
ridiculously smarter than you. We, we're all at the same school. We made it into the same school. So exactly. And yeah. I like, I was talking to my therapist about this actually. And she mm-hmm. was like, your feelings are always valid, but you have to like look at like something you're like anxious about. And like, it mm-hmm. could just be like something that's like totally like not a fact. Like yeah. if you're like, I'm never going to get a job. It's like, yeah, it's valid. You feel that way, but like mm-hmm. you are going to get a job. Yeah. It's like not a factual statement. Or like, if yeah. you're like, I'm not as smart as everyone. It's like mm-hmm. valid. You feel that way, especially like you're mm-hmm. one L year, but it's not a factual statement and just kind of like learning to like reason with yourself, like throughout law school, yeah. I feel like it's half the battle. It's not just like the learning the law. It's also mm-hmm. just like assuring yourself that you're like deserving of your spot there. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. I love that advice. You validate the feelings, but then you have to be like, it might not be true though. I can feel like this but also yeah but also like is that actually a fact (laughs) yeah no I love that okay beautiful advice okay I want to talk a bit about your blog now and just kind of how you got into blogging did you start before law school once you were in law school what was your pathway to blogging (laughs) yeah I had definitely started blogs like in like high school and I don't even remember them like I had always like had an interest in it I'd always like Mm -hmm. followed bloggers and I think I was kind of at that age like zillennial where I would like follow youtubers in middle school Mm -hmm. more so than like tv shows and I loved reading blogs um Mm -hmm. always kind of wanted to start one never really had like a topic to blog about um Mm -hmm. and then during March of 2020 after running through Tiger King and all of the other shows everyone was watching (laughs) I was like whoa I have so much time and now that I'm not in the library yeah. Um, so I started a blog and also going back to, I feel like there's like this romanticized vision of law school sometimes mm-hmm. where it's like Elle Woods really did make it look easy. And like, yeah, she yes, had her she struggles, did. but <laughs> it actually is like really hard. And I just wanted mm-hmm. to give like no BS, honest advice because mm-hmm. I kind of wish when I was applying to law school and I was reading things online, I was reading a little bit more realistic advice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I never wanted to like mislead anyone reading my blog. Mm-hmm. And I made a post at the end of my 1L year, like Elle Woods made it look easy, like read this before you want to go to law school. And a few people mm-hmm. I went to college with were like messaging me like, thank you so much. I've been glad I like read this before deciding to go. Mm-hmm. And that kind of like made it worth it. Um, it was never like supposed to be like my main thing. I just kind of wanted to like share mm-hmm. lessons I was learning along the way. Yeah. Um, And I just found it like a fun creative outlet because I feel like Mm -hmm. law can be like very non-creative sometimes. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I started that and I I still do it. Um, It's just kind of like a fun thing for me. Um, Mm -hmm. But I started TikTok last year. Mm -hmm. One second, sorry. (laughs) The the pros, I love that they're noise canceling, but they don't stay in my ears very well. Oh, really? I just have the original ones they stay in way better. Okay. Interesting. I would have thought the pros would stay in better. (laughs) I know. Um, yeah, sorry, but I (laughs) think I just made a TikTok. I had made a TikTok account like for my blog with the same Mm -hmm. name and I just uploaded like randomly on a whim. Um, and I switched back to my like normal personal account and didn't think about it. And then like a week later I went back and the video had like not really blown up, but it had like 50,000 views or something. And I was that's like, vague for just I was random like, that's video. definitely like more people that didn't have ever read my blog. Like, yeah. Um, and it was just like a joke about like, if I can, I can go to a law school in the middle of a pandemic because Elle Woods raised me or something. It was like a joking thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh wait, like TikTok's like actually kind of cool. Just like mm-hmm. the reach it has, I guess, versus like traditional yeah. outlets like blogging or mm-hmm. even Instagram. And um, so over time, it kind of shifted more to ADHD focused than Mm -hmm. law school. That's Um, when I I found you when you were doing the ADHD videos more. (laughs) And that's still kind of what I do mostly um, because I'll make like law school videos from time to time, Mm -hmm. but it's just kind of like a fun thing for me. It's like, I'm like, my career is going to be law focused, but it's just kind of been like my outlet to stay sane sane during quarantine, honestly. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I love that. That's so fun. TikTok definitely is interesting in that way that it has a bigger reach. And yeah, it's like the way they have like the FYP and stuff, like it's the for you page. So like you could just end up like on anyone's feed. Right. And it just gets so like 
it's crazy like how curated it can get like I have mm -hmm. like friends from law school that like I've ended up on their for you pages just because like we're both in law school in DC yeah and it's like again it's kind of, kind of creepy sometimes like I feel like something like so specific to my humor will like pop up on my mm -hmm. for you page oh, yeah. <laughs> um but it is kind of cool like seeing like the reach that I can have and it's like definitely had more of a reach than like my blog and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And so it's just been kind of like more, it's been like a fun thing. And I think also more people have resonated with like the ADHD content mm -hmm. um, because like law school is like a little bit more niche, I think, but yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, well, the ADHD stuff made it to me before I was in law school. So um, I think it made it a little further. I think you're right. <laughs> it made its way to my for you page when I was like in the process of getting diagnosed with ADHD myself. And gotcha. I was, like, I was like, wait, she's in law school and has ADHD. This is interesting. I didn't realize like there's this whole like niche of people on TikTok with the term JDHD. Oh, wait, I've never heard that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, and there's actually a lot of people that have ADHD in law school. And I mean, there's yeah. just a lot of people that have ADHD in general. Yeah. And I saw this TikTok today and it was like, people keep complaining that like ADHD is overdiagnosed and like people like uh, everyone on TikTok like says they have ADHD, which kind of bothers me because ADHD is still underdiagnosed, under especially in women. Mm -hmm. But um, there was like a meme and it was like, what do you expect? TikTok is like a slot machine for dopamine. And it's it so true. Awesome. It's like, of course, there's people with ADHD on TikTok. It's like five second videos and yeah. like quick dopamine. Like, of mm -hmm. course, you're going to have a lot of people with ADHD yeah. on TikTok. And that Literally. like clicked for me. Yeah, it's the quick dopamine and the short attention span. And if you don't like yes. it, you slide up and you'll find something. Exactly, you like. exactly. It's, it's like so kind of addicting. like made my attention span worse though sometimes because oh. I'm like watching TV and I'm like, wait, I just want to scroll. I, yeah, I did that the other night. Actually, I was like, "Wait, I'm watching a TV show. I can't watch both at the same I know. time." <laughs> I do the same thing. Yeah, that's so funny. I have not heard the term though, JDHD, but it does make sense. I feel like almost to. Um, so there's a lot of things out there too that I've seen on TikTok about like ADHD and burnout, but how like, yeah people with undiagnosed ADHD a lot of times like end up like going through like more schooling and wanting to do yes. more. So yes. It's like this perfectionism. Yeah. So I wonder too, if there are a lot of people, um, in law school with like undiagnosed ADHD too. Yeah. No, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I saw there's like a, I follow like several ADHD TikTokers, but there's one and I don't even remember her name. She's like a psychiatrist that has like, mm -hmm. she specializes in, in ADHD and she was like, yeah, you know, like my advisor told me I, I would never go to med school oh, with ADHD. Oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I feel like we all had this experience because yeah. mine told me like I would never get into law school. And it was like, mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> yes, I will. Yeah. And it definitely is this like challenge where we're like, mm -hmm. um, don't tell me no. Yeah, like if you tell me no, I'm going to do it. <laughs> that makes me want to do it like way more than I even wanted to in the beginning. Yeah, no, that's like how I am with everything, but super interesting how that plays into school for people mm -hmm. and like going into school further and then I do follow another um content creator she's not in law school um it's Clara I don't remember her last name but um she was going to she told a story about how she was trying to get her PhD um yeah. but like she had um ADHD and she had reached like that burnout point of she had been trying yep. to strive for the perfectionism for too long so she ended up like mastering out of her PhD program. But so I was like, you do hit that like peak of burnout eventually if you don't actually pay attention yeah. to what you need and like take care of your brain. Definitely. That was like me because I didn't get diagnosed until I was 18. And okay. like, I feel like it, it sounds like you got diagnosed like relatively recently. Like, like summer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like going through school, like and feeling like you aren't reaching your potential mm -hmm. was like definitely a driving force in like my academic perfectionism yeah. because oh, it's yeah. like, I, I remember even like an elementary school being mm -hmm. like her standardized testing scores aren't where they should be. And it's like, mm -hmm. but I'm trying so hard. And it's like, you have so much potential. Like I feel like having ADHD, especially as a girl, where it's mm -hmm. typically like inattentive type predominantly, mm -hmm. like it's just missed so often. And yeah. you're like constantly being told like, you're not living up to like what you could be if yeah. you were like focusing. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. I wasn't treated properly for ADHD. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that has like created a lot of like academic perfectionists. Like I yeah. follow a lot of TikTok ADHDers and it's like, mm -hmm. 
once you learn how to use your ADHD to your advantage and treat it properly, I feel like Mm -hmm. it can be like a really good thing. It just takes like getting to that diagnosis for a lot of people, I think, to be able to like go in that path. Yeah, that makes sense because then you like learn, oh, this is why my brain works this way. And then you can learn how to work with your brain instead of against it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I was kind of the opposite throughout school. So I actually have always been like at the higher end of like academics. Like I have always gotten like A's and stuff. Yeah. And my therapist told me it's probably because my brain is like smart in a way where it learned to like cope with not being able to like focus properly. So it's come up with its own like coping mechanisms to Mm. make me like not miss things. So like I became a perfectionist because I was like, I have to like quadruple check everything because I want to get these grades. But even with like having like the highest grades in the class and then like getting like a really good like standardized testing score. I'm always like, but I can do better than that. Like yeah, with the LSAT, I took it four times because I was- I took it three times Yeah, and it didn't even change my score really. Yeah, my score went up like one or two points each time. I think it went up one one point for me. And then I was like, why am I doing this to myself? Yeah, but so I was just like, no, I can still do better. And I was, I probably would have kept going forever, but then I was like, I can't, like, I'm done. Like the application cycle's over. Yeah. Otherwise, and I probably would have kept taking it. <laughs> and it's like with the perfectionism, we never like, we keep changing our standard of like what yes. is perfect. Exactly. I was, I've talked to my therapist about this too. It's like, for me, it's like, and I wasn't like failing out of like school or anything. Like mm-hmm. I was doing well and I was in like honors classes and AP classes, mm-hmm. but I was like, tr- I felt like I was trying so much harder than like my friends to do well or like get the same grades. And like you were saying, like making like these coping strategies, Mm -hmm. I feel like girls are really good with like masking ADHD symptoms. Oh yeah. And Mm -hmm. that's like, it's our brains working differently, Mm -hmm. but we keep changing the standard. Like for you, you probably had like a goal LSAT score and Mm -hmm. then like, oh, I want to keep taking it. And like, for me, it'll be like, (laughs) okay, I want to get into law school. And then it was, I want to get into a better law school. And then it's like, I want this GPA. And then it's like, oh, that's not good enough. I want something better. And it's like, Mm -hmm. I feel like our brains do that because we get bored and there is no actual possibility of perfection. Yeah, no, I (laughs) agree because our brains do just get bored. They're like, okay, so we hit this goal, but now we need a new one to keep us entertained. Yes. And motivated. I feel like too, like, I feel like with perfectionism, like it can be, and like, if I don't try to get better grades, then I'm going to Mm -hmm. find a new hobby that I don't need to find. (laughs) Okay. That's literally me right now though. So I keep finding new hobbies. So like, Uh, same. yeah. So I'm in law school and then I'm like, okay, well, what can I do? That's not law school. I want to do other things. So I was like, let me start a podcast. So I'm like, okay, I'm doing my podcast. I'm like, okay, I hit like this goal. Like we got like this many listens. I'm like, I want to start having guests on. I'm like, oh, I got this guest on. Let me have another one on. And this one. Yep. So now I'm like setting goals for like the podcast for this year. And I'm like trying to make more TikToks and stuff because I actually started out making TikToks a little bit, but never like consistently like about law school. And then I was like, let's make this into a podcast. (laughs) No, so, that's awesome though, that you've honestly, like, I feel like consistency is so hard with ADHD too. And so yeah. like the fact that you've been able to like consistent, like, like make a podcast consistently, like yeah. that's impressive because I've definitely had my moments where I'm like, all right, what should I start now? Another TikTok account, another yeah. like XYZ. And then it's like, I, usually I forget about it. It's yeah. the things like you really like that you stick with. I feel like. Yeah, no, definitely. The first TikTok account I started was actually dedicated to new girl. I was like, I'm going to remake love that. all of the new girl episodes. And I titled it Nick Miller's wife official. I think I made like three of oh them. My gosh. And then I was like, I'm going to make TikToks about law school now. <laughs> That's so funny. I, I saved a TikTok today and it was like, am I sad or do I just need to rewatch new girl? Yeah, mm, definitely Again. need to rewatch new girl. Always yes. the mood. <laughs> so funny though yeah but definitely I think the podcast actually like having it be out there and like actually posted places keeps me consistent with it I like I have to do it because otherwise people will like see that I stopped doing it whereas with TikTok you kind of just like if you fade out nobody's gonna yes notice really definitely and it's so easy to like you can like when I like go look at my TikToks, I'm like, oh, I didn't post mm-hmm. for like a month. What was going yeah. on? And I'm like, oh, like I was studying for finals and I was dying. Yeah. Like that's what was going on. But yeah. <laughs> so definitely it's dying. like, no, 
not it's not it's not the easiest to like stay yeah because yeah. you can fall off and come back and it's no big deal but with the podcast Usually. I'm like I have to do an episode every week yeah if I have like finals or something I can skip a week but if there's no yeah. reason like every single week so it's so yeah. great though yes definitely okay I feel like I had another specific question but it disappeared from my mind while I was talking <laughs> it definitely had to do with um law school Oh, no, it was just like a general, like, how do you balance, which I guess you kind of have to answer this. How do you balance like the blog with law school, with TikTok, with like maybe internships? How do you find balance in your life and right. all the different things you do? So I tried my best. I think that's the most important <laughs> because this is something I think we're always struggling with all of us. Mm -hmm. um, I think, especially for like my ADHD brain, like I can be very mm -hmm. disorganized so for me, it's really important to be good about planning um, and like planning pretty detailed. So I have like my physical planner. I also have like a Google calendar with like reminders for, you know, my bills and due dates for things so that I don't forget because it can be so easy to forget. And I also find that time blocking works really well for me um, because with the ADHD brain, it's easy to try to multitask and like if I don't hold myself accountable, I'll be like reading for school. Then I'm like, oh, like, let me look up this thing. I should like write a blog post about, or like, let me film a TikTok. And it's like, my mind is jumping around so much. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to use like the Pomodoro method or like a timer and like schedule a block of time and like physically write out in my planner. Like I'm reading for X class mm -hmm. from six to eight, or mm -hmm. I'm doing my internship from these hours and like kind of physically like making blocks mm -hmm. of time and like trying my best to focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of helps keep things balanced. And then with social media, like blogging um, for a while, I was just like taking time over the weekend to write like one blog post. Um, but at the end of the day, law school comes first for me. That's like my job right now. Um, and then when I'm doing internships, obviously like that's, you know, a close second that's like mm -hmm. correlates pretty closely to school. And I kind of have to remind myself like TikTok and blogging is for fun, but mm -hmm. it makes me happy. And it like, is like a nice creative outlet for me. So mm -hmm. I like to do things like in batches, like the time blocking. Um, so I'll like film a bunch of TikToks at once and then kind of upload them. Like when I feel inspired, mm -hmm. um, and I found that to be helpful. I just kind of try to like focus on one thing even though it's like against my nature um <laughs> and try to like plan things out so that I can like find that balance I find that when I just kind of take things as they go I just get really distracted and overwhelmed and don't do well prioritizing things yeah no that's so fair I love the Pomodoro method style I never do it exactly me um, either I'll do like 20 or 30 minutes like but so I have to set myself timers so if I'm studying and then I'm like you know like my brain needs a break it's not working I'll like set myself a five minute timer and be like you can scroll TikTok for five minutes and yes. then you have to get off of it because it can be so easy to like go down that rabbit hole of like yeah. I just scrolled on TikTok for two yeah. hours what was I doing mm -hmm. yeah or even if I'm just googling something so the other day I was talking to my mom and I was like I really want to go to Italy and I was like I want to like google things about like the best places in Italy to visit. And I was like, I'm going to yes. set myself a 20 minute timer or I will be doing this for hours. I agree. I think like timing and like, I was reading, I like to read like ADHD blogs and stuff just mm -hmm. for like tips. And yep. some, some one random post was like, time yourself doing things and you'll realize how much time you actually have. And I started mm -hmm. like timing, like random tasks. Like if I was like oh. going to like do my skincare routine, I was like, mm -hmm. I didn't realize I got so distracted and my skincare routine was taking like 45 minutes because I would like, you know, I like stop that. and like Google something or like stop <laughs> yeah. and listen to a podcast. And then yeah. I'm like, so I don't actually, I'm not running out of time. I am just not spending my time like in the most efficient way. Yes. No, that's so true. That is so ADHD. I do that all the time. I'll be showering. And then I realized oh. I've been standing in the shower for 10 minutes doing nothing. I've just been like standing there, just like thinking. Literally, I literally like take a 45 minute shower and it's because oh, I'll like sit there and like, <laughs> it's, I'll listen to a podcast. I have like mm -hmm. creative thoughts in the shower too. And it's yeah. like, sometimes like my fiance will like knock on the door and be like, Hey, just make me sure you're alive. I'm like, Oh yeah. Just like brainstorming about like <laughs> a TikTok I'm going to make next week. <laughs> 
No, that's so funny. That's so ADHD. But I love that idea of actually timing yourself doing things. Yeah. Like people out there with ADHD, I would just like challenge yourself to like time yourself in the shower. And because yeah. it's so easy to be like, oh, it's a five minute shower. Yeah. And then get out and be like, that was 45 minutes of my time. Yeah. And realize yeah. like, oh, wait, I actually could like schedule in like, you know, five minutes of meditating mm -hmm. or five minutes of journaling if I yeah. maybe cut back in this area by like five minutes. And once mm -hmm. you like see where you're spending your time, it makes it more manageable to like yeah. schedule things or plan your day accordingly. No, that's really smart. I'm going to try that this week. I want to try out. The it can be like, it can be shocking at first. Yeah. Like I was like, oh my God, like I'm literally spending like an hour in the shower or like an hour, like organizing my closet randomly yeah. on a Tuesday. And like, I oh, was yeah. not planning on doing that. Like, yeah. it's just crazy. Like getting sidetracked and like, like, mm -hmm. especially, or for me, like if I'm like cleaning, like I think like, oh, like I'm just like doing things like everyone else. And I'm like, no, I get stopped and like sidetracked like every yeah. two minutes. And that's why it like takes longer. Yeah, no, definitely. On Christmas Eve, I randomly decided to clean out under my bed. I was like, I need to vacuum. I have a dust. Oh my gosh. So I was like, it's too dusty. I need to I didn't literally just realized you're supposed to vacuum like your actual mattress and like headboard. Wait, I didn't with like a handheld vacuum. And I found so much dust because I've convinced myself I have a dust allergy because I've been like my eyes and like nose have been like running yeah. and like watery like constantly. Mm -hmm. And that has sent me into like a cleaning, like <laughs> I've been like vacuuming everything, but I did not know how much yeah. dust accumulates around your bed. And I'm like, this yeah. is disgusting. Okay. I didn't know you're supposed to vacuum your mattress. So when I clean my sheets this weekend, I am going to vacuum my mattress. <laughs> it's very, I, I didn't know either. I've been like telling everyone this and everyone's like, yeah. how, how bored are you on winter break? That this is what you're <laughs> finding out about. <laughs> God, I love that. But yeah. So then it ended up taking me like the whole day to clean out under my bed because I was like, well, I have to move the stuff so I can vacuum the dust, but then I have to exactly. the dust off of all the items. So it turned into an entire day project. And my mom was like, why are you doing this today? I was like, I started it and now I'm committed. Like I just, I have to finish it now. Yeah. You just have to, I ended up on cleaning TikTok one time and cleaning TikTok. it's so like <laughs> soothing for like anxiety. Like I'll be like stressed yeah. about like finals and I'm like, yeah. this is like amazing to watch this woman like clean her shower. Yeah. Um, but it's I so feel like satisfying. there's so many tips. I'm like, I don't think I actually like knew how to really clean things until cleaning yeah. TikTok. No, it's crazy. I clean when I was showering the other day, I got distracted in the shower and was like, I think I need to clean the shower. And then I did that when I got out too. So it's amazing. Oh, I, yeah. I will do that as well. Like I'll be in the shower and I'm like, oh, I need to like Windex the door. Yeah, and then yeah. it just, yep. Goes from there. But then it turned into me, not just cleaning the shower. I ended up cleaning the entire bathroom <laughs> and then I like vacuum the hallway in my bedroom. Yep. So we love where the ADHD takes us. It's very, it's so funny. Sometimes. Cause like in our brains, it seems so <laughs> rational. Cause it's just yeah, like it our sense. thoughts are like disconnected and then it's like, mm -hmm. they're jumping around. I feel like, and, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> for like the normal nor neurotypical person I feel like they're just like mm -hmm. yeah they're like what's an interesting that way of that and we're like well because I went to like clean the I went to put this coffee mug in the dishwasher and then I was like oh well now I have to empty the dishwasher <laughs> right and then I have to do this and that yeah, yeah no I do the same thing and I think like over winter break too like these are the times where I like will like not take my meds every single day because oh, I'm not yeah. like studying every day and then it's like wow, sometimes I like forget how all over the place, like I can be yeah. when I like, and I'm, then I think like this was me for like 18 years before getting yes. diagnosed. No, crazy. I literally, so I just started like a med that actually works like right oh, good. finals. So when I was studying for finals, I was like, I guess this is maybe helping. And then I didn't take it one day, the day after one of my finals, I was like, I'm going to give my brain a break. I'm just going to rest today. I could not function. I was like, I can't read this for more than 10 minutes. Yep. I yep. Like <laughs> I know it's kind of scary, but it's also just like kind of life-changing once you're like, yeah. wait, I'm supposed to be able to focus like, on one thing for more than yeah. 10 minutes. I was like, I can do an entire practice test without stopping to Google something that I want to buy every five minutes. Exactly. And I think like, it's like so taboo too. Like I like, I feel like my first year of law school, like people would kind of like talk about people that were like on ADHD meds and it was like yeah. oh like it must be nice to like be able to you know have that to get ahead I'm like actually it like evens the playing field yeah, because my brain doesn't think be the same way yeah I would yeah. be very behind 
Yeah. Like without having meds that worked the first couple months of school, I was like, I can't my, get myself to do these readings that it's I'm impossible. like behind on. So yes. then like when it came around to finals and I was on the meds, I was like, well, now my brain's working. I've got to catch up on everything in the next like it's two weeks. so hard. I actually relate to that because my first year I tried to like, I don't know. I have like a love hate relationship with medication because it's like, it does mm -hmm. make you focused, but I do feel like sometimes it like can take away that like creativity. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I want to just like see if I can do law school without it. Like I'm going to like use all my other tools in my toolkit, mm -hmm. my like, you know, meditation, exercise, yeah. like all the things. Mm -hmm. uh that did not work so midway through the semester went back on medication and I was like oh, why did I do that like I, yeah. I was just trying to like prove to myself I could do something yeah. that I didn't need to do and yeah. now I'm behind on like three months of Civ Pro reading like yeah that, oh thank my, you that was thank me that. Pro. it was the Civ Pro readings that I fell behind on and I could that was like the one on test that was not open it was not open book and I remember like just trying to like force myself to memorize like every rule of oh civil God. procedure and I was just oh, like I can't imagine that not being open I up. hate this yeah no that's so scary oh my goodness but yeah so um off of that my advice for anybody listening if you think you have ADHD get go talk to somebody about it get evaluated because maybe you do have it and then you could be medicated and maybe your life would be a little easier <laughs> Yeah. And also like not everyone that has ADHD like needs to be medicated. Like I have no, friends you might that aren't. Other coping mechanisms. Yeah, exactly. You might like therapy is super beneficial or even just like learning more about ADHD and like how your brain yeah. works. Like it's taught mm -hmm. me so much about like even just like how I should study yeah. or go about like my everyday life. Mm -hmm. And so like game changer med yeah. meds or not. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And like how I've learned, like if I set timers, it can keep me on mm -hmm. track now. I'm like, because otherwise I know my brain will just like go into it because I've learned about like time blindness now. Yep. I definitely am blind to time completely. Yep. Yep. So That's why honestly I started making like the ADHD TikToks because mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, I got diagnosed and I like sort of you like re you read the symptoms and you like mm -hmm. know what ADHD is, but like you don't really realize like all the little practical things yeah. that are like caused by it. It's like, yeah. oh, that's why I leave all the shampoo bottles in the shower like yeah. two months after they're empty. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think people like really like resonate with that and feel like less alone. And I think like, yeah. I mean, people comment all the time. They're like 40 and just got diagnosed. And like, yeah. I just feel like so passionately about this that if you think there could be something wrong, like you should talk to your doctor yeah. or your therapist or whoever, because mm -hmm. like learning more about your brain is never a bad thing. Yeah, definitely never a bad thing, whether you want medication or not. Like if you know you have it, like you can learn to do things differently to like make things that you might find difficult in your life right now easier or even realize that you were doing things in a weird way, like leaving all the shampoo bottles in the shower right. or like right. I will leave things all over my house. And my dad's always like, do you not like see your stuff you left all over the table? I'm like, honestly, no, like I see through it after a certain yeah. point in time. Which definitely I didn't, I didn't realize that was an ADHD thing but once I learned it was I was like yeah like I literally like I don't see that there anymore I've like it's invisible to me so totally or so some people even like I think with like mental health being more discussed and like less stigmatized mm -hmm. you know people might see a TikTok and think like they might have ADHD but when they get evaluated they could end up having some other thing yeah. or and I've mm -hmm. like heard a lot about that and I just think that this is why we need to be talking about mental health so yeah. that people are seeking help and actually getting properly yes. diagnosed because yeah. I just think like so much of it has been missed in the past yeah. and like it's really important for us to like continue talking about it. Yeah, no, definitely. Because there are definitely other things that present as ADHD. That's mm -hmm. also why it's important too. If you think you do have it from like seeing TikToks, you should get evaluated because a definitely. lot of the symptoms line up with like trauma responses too. Right, right. Where it and could like be something kind of that you could things, like, yeah. yeah, ton of different things like that, where it could be something else that you could work through. And like, if it is like a trauma response, it could be something that one day then you work through and like, you no longer have right. those symptoms anymore. So it's right. important to talk to someone no matter definitely. what you think is going on in your brain. <laughs> Definitely. I'm like, I'm not any sort of mental health professional. Like I definitely not. <laughs> just like want to make people feel less alone about like yeah. weird things they did yeah. that they might not know could be related yeah. to ADHD or anxiety or whatever it is. Yeah. And your TikToks, like now that I have, now that I know I have ADHD, like I've been properly evaluated. Mm -hmm. Um, now I can look at them and be like, Oh, that's why I do that. Like, yeah. So yeah. Super interesting. <laughs>
But yeah, okay. So that is the main content of the episode. We do have two little segments we do at the end of every cool. episode. So the first one is called the how to be a better person segment. So it's like a tip of something good you can do for like people, the environment, animals, planet, whatever you're feeling. So I will go first so you can think. <laughs> so my tip for this week is going to be that um, when you're buying, well, it's going to be about a specific company, actually. So I like the skincare company Pacifica. Um, they're cruelty oh, yeah. free. Um, they're vegan, but I just learned that they have a recycling program where a lot of their products, um, after you use them, if you go onto their website, you can get a free label from them and you can send the empty bottles back to them and then they get oh, repurposed cool. in some way. So oh, that's awesome. That's my tip for today. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, that's so cool. I literally just yeah. did a TikTok about one of their, um, products and I don't remember what it's okay. called but it's like a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury serum or something which oh, I had okay. like yeah. bought as like a little like tiny size because I just could yeah. not bring myself to buy the full one and then yeah. it was like oh it's like an exact dupe but it's like a yeah. fraction of the cost and now I'm gonna go buy it because it's very yeah cool. I love Pacifica it's my favorite brand so that's my tip for today <laughs> that's awesome Ugh, yeah. okay I'm trying to think um I think like randomly Venmoing your friends like five dollars for coffee is oh, I love that. a really easy way to brighten someone's day without even mm -hmm. leaving your bed. Um, oh, I'm all for self-care this time of year. I think mm -hmm. it's like a tough time after the holidays. Everyone's trying mm -hmm. to get back into, you know, New mm -hmm. Year's resolutions and all that. Yeah. Um, and it can be hard to take care of other people when you're like trying to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but like randomly been mowing like one of your friends $5 for coffee. I think that is something that obviously isn't in the budget all the time, but it can be mm -hmm. a fun little way to brighten a friend's day. Yeah, I love that. That's so cute. <laughs> okay. And then our second segment, we'll change it up a little. So it's usually a fun thing to do in New York, but we changed it up last week too. So we did like a fun thing to do for the holidays, but we'll do like a winter Ooh, themed fun. activity. Okay. So, but I, I didn't think of one for this one either. I forgot about it. <laughs> I'm thinking. Let me see. Oh, you know what? I think I will... I'll still do a New York themed one. It's a winter New York thing. So my tip for um, winter time in New York is to just still this time of year, they have them up, go like look at the holiday window displays at like the big department oh, stores that's and stuff. So fun. They're so pretty. You don't even have to go shopping. You obviously can if you want, but just like walking down like Fifth Ave and looking at all of the window displays, they're like super pretty, really elaborate. They put out new ones every year. It's a big deal. So um, check that out. That's, my oh, that's so fun. Okay, that's really good. Um, I say a fun winter thing. It could be I like live... an anti-winter thing, like something to stay inside I'm to trying do. To think. Let's see. I think one. So I have a dog, a little pandemic puppy. I Me too. Say hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, so I have been buying him dog sweaters unnecessarily, uh, because I feel like <laughs> sometimes I like impulse buy things and I'm like, it could be a lot worse than like a $10 dog sweater. Yes. And it's a double <laughs> win because when you walk him, it brings other people joy seeing cute little dog yes. sweaters. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've been loving taking him around in his little Christmas sweaters. I love that. No, I buy sweaters for my dog too. She's actually barking at me now. She wants to come in the room, but she's locked out. <laughs> Um, but people, every time I bring her out in a sweater or her rain jacket or her rain boots, people gush all over her. It's so funny. Yes. Oh my sweater, gosh. So much joy. <laughs> and me mostly, but I, I got him these yes. little like Christmas pajamas that he hates because yeah. they go like on his legs too. No, I got her some of those too. I got them from <laughs> Pet Smart or Petco. Oh my gosh. So cute though. Yeah. She hates them and they just like fall off her legs sometimes. I'm like, I know he like so hobbles cute. around. <laughs> yes. You have to wear them. Yeah. And her little butt sticking out though, because it goes on the legs, but the butt's yes. out. And I got, I put them on her right after she got a haircut. So like, she looked like naked oh, and my, my family was like, it's just like, when like framing her butt right now <laughs> that's so funny yeah Ollie like kind of hates the cold and I also yeah. don't love the cold and so we've been like mostly inside yeah. but I think the Christmas that's sweaters would be a fun yes. winter <laughs> yes. thing for me I love that okay all right that was our episode for today so do you okay. want to tell everyone where they can follow you Taylor yeah so on Instagram and on our TikTok it's the legal confidential and Instagram it's just legal confidential um but yeah 
Okay. And then is your blog linked on your Instagram? So yes. Just yes. Me. All that is linked on my Instagram and TikTok. Okay. Beautiful. Well, all right. And thank you then, so much for having yeah. me. You're welcome. And then you all know you can follow us on Instagram if you don't yet. It's Legally Couture Podcast. We have a TikTok in the works right now, but you can follow my personal TikTok if you want. It's Erin Lindsay 13. But yeah, so we'll have that up and running. But thank you again for coming on, Taylor. Of course. Thanks so much for having me. Have a yes. great rest of your winter break. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye, thank everyone. You.